Welcome back to my channel everyone. In this video, we'll be solving this beautiful problem from kinematics, check your understanding. So all of you guys do try this problem out for five minutes and then come back for the solution. So, and also if you enjoyed the solution, please do consider liking and subscribing. It means a lot and gives me way more motivation to make more videos. So let's begin with the solution. So in this question, we have a beetle that is carrying a food grain and it rests on a small platform. This is the platform they're talking about. And it's moving with a uniform velocity of u parallel to a slope. At some point of time, the foot grain fell out of the grip of the beetle. And after a collision with the slope, the foot grain stops for a moment and then starts sliding down the slope. The moment when the foot grain collides with the slope, the beetle jumps off horizontally backwards with a velocity 3u relative to the platform for the foot grain. So if the beetle grabs the foot grain exactly when it lands on the slope, then we have to find the suitable expression for the height h of the platform. So we need to find this height h. So let's try to understand the problem. So, so let's say this is the slope and this was the line of travel of the beetle. And let's say when the beetle was at point A, the food particle was released at this point. As it is released at rest relative to the platform, it will only have a velocity of u relative to the ground right and the beetle and the platform together are still moving horizontally with a velocity u so the platform along with the beetle is still moving towards the right with a velocity of u so let's say this is the beetle so if we sat on the platform and we observe this food particle it would appear as if this food particle is at rest because we have to reverse this u velocity and add it to add it to the food grain particle right so this would appear to be at rest now it's simply like a particle that was dropped from a height h and undergoing free fall. So the time of flight of such a particle is square root of 2h by g first of all. Okay and now let's go back to ground frame. So in ground frame this had a velocity of u in this direction. So, so in, in ground frame let's say this is the trajectory of the food grain particle. And let's say this point is b and let's say this point is c. So for the food grain particle to go from here to here it will take a time of root 2h by g. So if I want to find the distance bc, let's say, we can use kinematics formulas. So the acceleration along the slope is going to be g sin theta in this direction. And the acceleration perpendicular to the slope is going to be g cos theta in this direction. Along the slope, I can say bc equals u multiplied by the time of flight, which is square root of 2h by g, minus half, the acceleration is going to be g sin theta times t squared, which is 2h by g. Okay, so this is the value of the bz distance. Okay, so now let's see what's happening with the beetle. So the beetle, when the food particle was at this point, the beetle also was at this point, and when the food, when the beetle, when the food particle reached c, the beetle actually will travel a distance even further, right? Because its velocity is still constant, and whereas this food particle is getting decelerated. So let's say this, um, let's say the beetle actually reached some point d over here. So now if we check the question, it's given that the moment when the food grain collides with the slope, the beetle jumps off horizontally backwards with a velocity 3u relative to the platform. Okay, so if we want to write the velocity of this beetle, it will have, it, it jumped with a velocity of 3u horizontally. It will also have the velocity of the platform, which is actually u along the slope, right? And this angle will be theta. So if I have to resolve the components of velocity, so I'm going to get rid of this. So the beetle will have a velocity of u multiplied by 3 cos theta minus 1 along the slope and it will and it will have velocity of 3u sin theta perpendicular to the slope okay and the acceleration of the beetle if i break it down it will be g sin theta in this direction and it will be g cos theta in this direction so at this specific moment of time when the beetle just jumped off the platform the food particle is at c and is at and it is at rest so if we observe c the Acceleration of C is going to be G sine theta down the incline. It won't have the cos theta component, right? So now if we take the food particle as a frame of reference, then then this G sine theta component can be cancelled out. So, and now the point C, now it's basically a question in which this beetle has to reach this point C. And let's say the beetle takes time T to reach from D to C. So what would this distance DC be? It would be equal to, so... Okay, so we calculated this distance BC to be u root 2 h by g minus h sine theta. And the distance AD will be square root 2 h by g multiplied by u, right? So if you see carefully, 
CD would be h sine theta because uh, because this distance is just AD. And if you subtract something from AD, you will get BC. So and that distance is CD, right? So which means CD must be h sine theta. Okay, so so now all we have to do is apply kinematic equations. The equation would be h sine theta equals s equals. There is no acceleration along the slope, so u times three cos theta minus one multiplied by the time. So this would be equation number one. And equation number two will be in the vertical direction. Okay, so if I extrapolate the extrapolate these two lines, it's given that this height is h, which means this height is going to be this is theta. So this height is going to be h cos theta. So now if we write it in the perpendicular direction, so it will be minus h cos theta, the displacement, and the initial velocity is 3u sin theta multiplied by the time. Time we can get from equation number one, which would be h sin theta upon u multiplied by 3 cos theta minus 1. Okay, so now as you can see, we can cancel off 1h from all of these terms. And from here, we'll get 3 sin square plus 3 cos square would be 3 minus cos theta. So this would become 3 minus cos theta. And this denominator is 3 cos theta minus 1. I can cancel it off with this. And there would be another term of 3 cos theta minus 1 in the numerator multiplied by 2u squared divided by g cos theta sine squared theta. So this is a required expression. So if you guys have any doubt, you can comment down below. And if you, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.